Hello everybody, welcome back to my RC Plane channel. I'm James, continuing on with this Balsa USA Stingray 120 build and continuing with the construction of the wing. So a couple of steps I want to get to are, I want to set the dowels for the wings. This is the wing mounting dowels that plug into the fuselage. Um, I'm going to drill them through the leading edge and then they drill through and they attach through the leading edge into this braced area where the plywood is here in the center section of the wing. So I want to do that. And then I want to set the center section ribs. There are four rib pieces here, as you can see. Two of them go in the center, kind of like sandwiched together. And then there's going to be one on either side, outside of the center. And then I want to start doing the um, sheeting, the leading edge sheeting. So that's my goals here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so what I did is I set my plan up again on my building board. And what I did is I took the two pieces. I had, I had two sections um, for each wing that I had cut out previously. And what, I, what I've done here is I've rejoined them in the center here so that I have a, a guide when I place these ribs and also when I'm kind of looking at the, uh, the dowels and such. I just, I just put them back together, taped them, and put some, some clear wrap down again to protect the plans. All right, so per the instructions, hopefully maybe you can see this. Um, here's they're showing the drill holes that are, that are gonna be in either side of the center of the wing. And then here are the dowels that are then plugged into there. And those are gonna be set one and a quarter of an inch um, from the center on either side and then in the center. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm just gonna go ahead and just measure that off using my scale and then my um, square to get everything lined up correctly. All right, so to start with, we'll, we'll go with the leading edge. Now here's the center, obviously. So I'm gonna measure an inch and a quarter on either side of that, and then we'll come back and we'll get it centered from the top. So I'll just go an inch and a quarter. It's right about there. And another inch and a quarter on this side. It's right about there. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and measure down from the top. So one thing I wanna note again, and check out the previous video on that, on this, is that they gave me a piece of uh, leading edge stock material that is too wide. And interestingly, they only shaped one side of it, and the other side was flat. So it actually hangs over more on the bottom. So what I did is I lined it up on the top, just as, just as a reference, I just lined everything on the top ribs, and then I let it overhang on the bottom, and I'll go back and trim that back. So the width, the, the final width at this location is only gonna be an inch wide. And I'm just gonna use the ribs, as you can see here, they're only an inch wide right here. So I'm just gonna measure a half inch from the top. That's how I'm gonna do it, to keep myself where it's gonna eventually be the center, if that makes sense. So I'm just gonna go ahead and measure now on that line at my half inch mark. I'm just gonna draw a line for fun. And then a half inch right here. So there's the first one. So yeah, it looks like it's high, but it's not because this is overhanging on the bottom. Then I'll go to this side and do the same thing. So my line, my half inch mark is right there. Okay, so those are my drill locations, here and here. Okay, now for the center brace section, I'm gonna find the center by first transferring my center line from my spars where they meet up here on the top. I'm just gonna transfer that to the this piece of plywood brace right here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom. Here's my line right there. And then I'm going to connect these two. Okay, so I'm just going to use this other scale to draw my vertical. Like so. Okay, and like on my on the leading edge, I'm going to measure an inch and a quarter out from the center. Right there. 
Okay, so now I'm an inch and a quarter on this side. I'll mark it. Okay, there are my two dots. Okay, now I'm going to use sort of the same method. I'm just going to measure the rib itself as a guide. These are two and a quarter inches. So that means the center is going to be an inch and an eighth from the top. Okay, so since this is pretty wide, I'll mark a, I'll drop a vertical from my spar. Flip it and do the same on this side. Okay. And now I'll just measure, I said an inch and an eighth. And I've already got an eighth set on my on my square right there, right above the three. So I'm at three and a three and an eighth. I'm just gonna measure from the two then to get my inch and, a, inch and an eighth on here, right here. The beauty of a square. And I flipped it over, so now I'm gonna be down here one inch. Right there. Okay, so those are my drill holes now. One, two, three, four, and hopefully they all line up. Okay, I'm going to start by just taking my awl and I'm going to set a little point at each location. This is soft wood, so it's going to drill fairly easily until we hit that plywood. But I like kind of doing a nice, get something set for the drill bit to line it up, a little pilot punch mark, if you will. And I'll do the same thing. I probably won't be able to get in here. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to get in here very easily. With a, That's not going to be too helpful. So the other thing I realized is that the drill bit is not going to go all the way through to those locations, at least the smaller one, the pilot. And the dowels are drilled. Ultimately, they're drilled for a 5 16 inch diameter. So once I get this one set, once I get... Once I get this, the leading edge drilled in, I can go through and just drill this straight in into the back there. Ideally, I like to have a pilot hole when I'm drilling, but in this case, I think I'm just going to have to just do my best and line it up and just take my time and make sure I drill it nice and straight. All right, here we go. There's pilots. All right, so what I decided to do is I do have a longer one, larger diameter, but this is not the full diameter yet. This is like an in-between size. I don't know what size it is, I just grabbed it. But this will actually go all the way through, and then I can go ahead and punch these two, get them close, and then go back with the 5 16 So let me go ahead and get this guy on here. We'll start with this one. Now I'm carefully going to push this all the way through, and line it up on my hole on the other side. Okay, that should work. Okay, so I got my 5 16th inch drill bit now, and this isn't the most powerful drill I have. This is a little, it's a little battery operated guy, as you can see here. It's a nice little drill, but I'm not sure if it's gonna have enough power. I'll try it out. If not, I'll get my larger drill out, but let's go ahead and give it a go. Should go through the top okay, or the leading edge okay.
part right. I really want to be careful because this is soft. I don't want to chew it up or tear it up, so I'm trying to be very careful. The ply was not as bad, but balsa, it can tear up on you. I thought about maybe putting some thin CA on this to kind of make it a little stiffer, but anyhow. Very good. And these guys are supposed to slide in. May have to get a rat tail file in there and kind of clean it up a little bit. Yeah, so that's tight. Let me get a little file. This has an instructions. I may have to kind of sand it out a little bit with a with a file. So let me try doing that. All right, so I didn't have a file that I could fit in here. So I'm just going to go ahead and just use sandpaper. I'm going to tear off a piece. This is 150 grit. And I'm just going to roll it up. Maybe I'll use my dowel. I'll probably cut this in half again. And it doesn't have to be, you know, it doesn't have to be perfectly round because I'm going to be able to, I'm going to move it around and kind of rotate it. And we'll clean out these holes. Just kind of rotate it and work it like this and you should get a nice relatively even diameter. As long as you keep rotating it I think you're okay. There we go. Okay. All right so I'm gonna go ahead and work on these other ones and we'll come back and we'll put these dowels in. They're not going to be glued in at this point they're just going to be done to this point and then later on they'll be glued in once we we have one more piece of leading edge that goes on the top here and that gets drilled out and then the dowels will be set in there okay so I kind of cleaned those holes out a little bit and did a little bit of sanding and we can now push these in see this pop it through goes through the bottom this one's a little tighter Careful with the leading edge. So they're going to be in there something like that. Flip it over. Kind of see back in here. All right, well, I have my center ribs taken out here. So I have four pieces, actually four ribs, that I'm going to be working with. And what happens is two of them, as I mentioned, two of them get sandwiched together and they form the center, the very center rib. And then here's these two pieces that go on the front. So these ones are going to form the center. And then we step out again with one for each on either side of the center. Now one thing I wanted to say or mention is that the center rib, the very center rib, is going to be aligned vertically along the vertical axis of the, of the airplane and also the vertical axis of the wing. So I'm just going to use, I just drew my, my center lines on all my pieces on the trailing edge in the center section here and then on the leading edge. And I'm just going to use those lines to line up the ribs here in the center. When I go to place these outer ones, I'm just going to set the wing down flat one at a time. I'll set this side down flat and then I'll put this rib in. Then I'll set this side down flat and I'll put this rib in because those ribs are obviously going to be perpendicular with the with the long axis of the wing. Okay, so I'm going to set two of these aside and we'll just work on these two right here. So what's going to happen is these are going to have to be trimmed because I have this block back here so I can't put the rib obviously all the way back like I can on the sides. These are these, the side ones are going to slide in and then of course the center ones are going to have to be trimmed here. And then also we have this little plate up here this reinforcement this reinforcement a little piece of plywood which is about an eighth of an inch thick so that about an eighth of an inch along the front end here is going to have to be trimmed off also in order for this to slide in if, if i step out here you'll see that these slide in okay but over here i'm going to have to trim it because there's that piece of wood there okay so i'm going to go ahead and trim these down and then we'll set them in there all right so as i mentioned i need to cut off about an eighth of an inch along the leading edge here to accommodate that piece of plywood. So I'm just going to go ahead and measure an eighth of an inch on here and draw a line. So I'm just going to cut
cut an eighth of an inch off this market. And I'll draw it on here. Like so. And then I'm just going to trim it. Now I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to trim it all off right now. I'm just going to trim off a portion of it. I'm going to see how it fits. Then I'll trim it again and I'll sand it as I go. I don't want to, I want to give myself a little bit of leeway. So I'll start right about here. Boy, that was some stiff balsa. Okay. It's going to be too, still too big. All right, just a little more. All right, I need to go a little bit more. So I would rather cut off a little bit at a time and take my time and then have it fit instead of cut off too much then have it be loose in there. Right about there. Let me go ahead and get some sand paper, or sand it, I mean. Right about like that. I think it could take a little bit more. So that'll be just about like that. So let me go ahead and trim this other one to fit and then we'll do these ones back here. All right, so I got these guys pretty close, but they're still a little bit on the snug side and I don't wanna push out my leading edge. So I don't wanna have it too, I don't want them to be, you know, it's okay for them to be snug, but I don't want them pushing out so I'm gonna, what I decided to do is kind of get a little bit more, I guess a little bit smarter about this. I'm gonna go ahead and sandwich these guys together with some thick CA, let them set up, and then I'll, then I'll kind of sand them as one and then go ahead and slide it in. And again, the thick is good because I can, gives me a little bit of time to work with it. Go ahead and sandwich them together. All right. So a little bit snug. All right, something like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna set this front center rib piece in here, and I'm gonna and, and I'm gonna line it up both on the bottom and the top along the lines that I drew, and then I'll set it in there with some thin and thick CA.
So the center rib is now set, and now I need to install these two outer ones. So to start with, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna work on this side first, and the wing is now flat on the building board, and I'm using these one, two, three blocks to hold it down, as you can see. And then I'm gonna be setting the front piece and then the rear piece. And I'm just gonna use my one, two, three block. Now, again, so this time I actually have the, the wing set up on the plan, so everything's aligned. So now I can use my one, two, three block again and just set it on the plan where the, where the rib is supposed to go. And then I can just slide it in like so and then, and then glue it in. And the same thing for the rear part. All right, so the center section ribs are now in place and I used both thin and thick CA depending on the application, depending on how it was going. I did, you know, like, like always, there are a little bit of gaps. Now, I know I've been talking about the gaps on this, on this build as being a little excessive, but regardless of that, every kit you build is gonna have some level of small fit issues and things like that. So you do, you do, you do need to have a, a, a filler system using a thick CA or some other method. I like to use the baking soda and use that as a gap filler, either with the thin, usually with the thin CA, and then sometimes with the thick CA. So if you haven't done that, it's real simple. For example, let me go ahead and pick a small joint and I'll show you what I mean if you haven't done this. Now again, you can use, I, use, I like to use baking soda. Some people like to use, you know, something like sawdust, like fine sawdust. Other people like to use maybe some resins and things like that. But let me see if I can kind of demonstrate how it works. All right, so hopefully you can see that I have a little gap here between this plywood piece and the rib. It's not really that concerning, but I'm just using this as an example. 
So that's a little open gap. And like what you can do is takes your just baking soda. And I'm going to try to get it on there with a brush if I can. And you kind of you can fill that gap in. I should probably do it right here because it's going to go through the other side. Let me do it right here. So you can fill the gap in, as you can see here, like that. And then take your thin CA and put a couple drops on there, like that. And that'll set really quick. So let me do the top one. And sometimes you may have to do it a couple times because it will settle a little bit in if it's a big enough opening. And then what you'll see is that it's filled in now. Let me get something to kind of poke on it. Probably not completely cured, but you get the picture that it's now filled in and pretty strong. Okay, so again, just some common baking soda and your Thin CA works for, for that. And I've started to use that in some locations. I may go over some of these ribs again where I need to and may do some additional gap filling. So now that the center ribs are finished, I can move on now to start to do the sheeting for the leading edge. So a couple steps I have to do before I can actually apply the sheets. One of them is I have to sand the spars down to match and blend the rib profile. Now, that's gonna be a little time consuming because I have to go over the entire wing on both sides because if you look at this closely, I don't know if you can tell, but if you look at it closely, the spar is just a little bit, I guess, higher than the ribs themselves, probably somewhere around the order of a maybe a sixteenth of an inch or so, I'm kind of guessing. So I need to bring this entire spar surface down, like I said, to match the, the rib profile. And then after that, I have to, again, shave this lower portion of the leading edge because it was too wide. So I did get a tip, actually, on the comments about sanding, which I'm going to try to use. And I want to protect the ribs. So I'm going to be sanding, obviously, you know, the spar down. The problem is the spar itself is a, a, a thicker, kind of harder base wood, and then the, the ribs are obviously balsa, so they're soft. And not only that, if I'm going like this, I can easily catch a rib and snap it. So I need to be very, very careful. And I am going to have to sand this whole thing down carefully to get it to blend to the, to the airfoil shape. So a way to help protect that is to use some masking tape and I can put thicker or a wider one on, but you can take your masking tape and put it sort of like this over the ribs. I'm just going to show you an example. Same thing for this side back here and that's going to protect these help protect the the ribs from getting sanded. Again, I need to be very careful. And I'm just going to be using, a, I think this is like about a 240 or so grit sandpaper. And once again, real quick, thank you for that tip. That was really useful. And I'm going to use it. And, you know, keep those comments coming. When you're checking out the videos and you see things, um, check out the comments because there's a lot of good stuff in there that people are have a lot of insight and experience and it's a good place to learn. All right, everybody. Well, I realized that I'm running a little bit long on this video, so I decided to call it good for now. And it's going to take me some time to sand this all down, like I mentioned. So let me go ahead and I'll do this offline. I'll get the spars all sanded down and I'll remove the material below this leading edge and then I'll come back in the next video on this and we'll start the sheeting of the wing. Okay, so until then, thanks again for watching my channel. I always appreciate it and we'll see you next time.